Worldwide parent coach and conscious educator Sue DeCaro is on a mission to revitalize the joy in parenting. Welcome to Conscious Parents, Thriving Kids, a podcast designed to help parents all over the world create deeper connections with themselves and their children while overcoming life's daily parenting challenges. Listen in if you want to bring more laughter, love, and enjoyment to your home life. Welcome to Conscious Parents Thriving Kids, a place for all things parenting. I am your host, Sue DeCaro. Parenting, as I'm sure you know, is one of the hardest jobs and it takes a lot of energy. Many parents that I speak with are exhausted and feel overworked and sometimes overwhelmed. And when we feel this way, perhaps our mood, tolerance, patience, creativity, and reactivity may all be affected when it comes to our children. Caring for ourselves is essential. There are huge payoffs for both parent and child when we take good care of ourselves. Many feel that this is a selfish way to live, but truly it is selfless. Caring for yourself is one of the most important things that you can do as a parent. You cannot pour from an empty cup. We have to fill our own buckets using self-care practices that allow us to give and take care of our families with more patience, passion, and understanding. When our tank is empty, we truly have nothing to give. Be there for others, but never leave yourself behind. A beautiful quote by Dodinsky. Some examples of great self-care practices are plugging your cell phone in at night, not using it through the evening so that you're able to get a good night's sleep. Self-care is about being compassionate toward yourself, allowing time to renew our energy, strengthen, recharge, and reset. Ernest Hemingway wrote in Men Without Women, the most painful thing is losing yourself in the process of loving someone too much and forgetting that you are special too. And self-care is all about not losing ourselves, connecting to ourselves, filling ourselves up in order to take care of all the others that we love and we spend time with. So self-care is an individualized thing. It's not something that we all can do the very same thing. It speaks to all of us. It's really about choosing what speaks to you and fills you up and makes you feel energized and ready for the next moment. So we need to look at what truly speaks to us, listening to our own inner voice to find what is fulfilling and creating our own personal list of self-care practices from that. It's a preference. It's about your interests. It's about your enjoyment. It's not about what we should do. There are no shoulds to self-care. So some of the things I'd love to share with you so you can take a look at these and see if they actually speak to you, if they serve you in any way, and if they don't, move on to the next thing or to something else that does. One of the self-care practices that I love is mindful eating. I find it very difficult to do because many times those around me are not mindfully eating and I get caught up in the energy around me. But mindful eating is a great practice for self-care. Exercising every day or exercising three times a week, intentionally making a plan for yourself in what feels good in the energy spectrum. Moving your body is a great self-care practice. But again, don't go to the gym because all your friends go. Go because it serves you and it feels right for you. Spending time with uplifting people, as opposed to perhaps the opposite. Uplifting people can really boost our energy. Go for coffee, have a drink, spend some time watching a movie together or chatting. Doing this because you enjoy it and it feels energizing is what's important. Reframing negative self-talk can also be part of our self-care practice. There is so much negative talk that we can be surrounded by and it's important to reframe it. And it's important to reframe our own self-care talk. So not just that of our friends, but also our own. Taking good care of your own health 
And that can mean body, mind, and soul. So your body, your skin, your overall health, what you eat, how you move your body, these are all personal choices that are really important in building a self-care practice. For example, my body has been yelling for years to be gluten-free, dairy-free, and grain-free. And so therefore I am. And when I treat my body in a way that doesn't serve it by eating grain or dairy by accident, my body speaks up. So this is one of my self-care practices that actually energizes me and makes my body feel good as opposed to the opposite. Being alone. Many people enjoy their alone time. Walking in nature, running in nature, sitting in nature. <clears throat> nature is such a fueling opportunity to feel that energy inside of us. Watching the birds, watching the snowfall, watching the raindrops looking at the color of the trees, just observing the world around you in nature can be a great self-care practice. Gratitude practice, we all read about those. Yoga, journaling, uplifting music, writing a note to yourself. Imagine that. Sitting with a cup of tea or coffee. Coloring in a mandala coloring book, one of my favorites. That takes me away from everything. I find that a total release from life. Painting, cooking or baking, acts of service, meditation, mindful moments, taking a nap, going to bed early, massages, getting your nails done, taking a long mindful shower where you actually feel the water droplets on your skin. Stepping outside of your comfort level, imagine that. It's a great way to energize yourself because once you do and you realize you can and it's okay to be uncomfortable, it can feel great and so energy producing. So as you look at your own self-care and your own practices, I challenge you to be intentional, even for a week. Plan out one self-care practice a day baby steps that you would like to do that fuel you, that feel right for you, that are about your choice, not the next door neighbors. Every day, make a note, whether mental or physical, about what that offered to you, how that helped you get through your day and perhaps through your parenting. Self-care builds resilience. It helps us to manage a challenge with more energy. We can support others once we take care of ourselves. This also serves as incredible modeling. When we take care of ourselves, the message we send to our children and our families is that we are important, that we do need to take time to energize ourselves. And when they see us doing that, they can realize the importance of this for themselves. It's not about just telling them to take care of themselves. It's about showing them through modeling. And I'm sure as you know, our children are doing what we do, not necessarily what we say. So be a great model for your children by taking good care of yourself. You deserve it. So a couple self-care check-ins. Put down your phone. Eat something healthy. Take a moment to rest. Go outside. Take a deep breath. Have a glass of water. Those are some very simplistic ways to include in your daily practice a beautiful self-care practice for yourself. You deserve it. Thank you for joining me. Remember, every moment is a new moment for Conscious Connections. Thanks for listening to Conscious Parents, Thriving Kids. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at iTunes or wherever you listen in. And be sure to visit DeCaroParentCoaching.com for a free download of 10 ways to connect with your child.